Hey there, Lakers. Welcome to a new episode of WLKR News. I'm Ambria Heights. And I'm Morgan Emerson. Whether it's a construction catastrophe, feeling overwhelmed by the never-ending scholarship essays, or the crazy April showers, the Lakers still continue to prevail through it all. Recently, four juniors from Russell County High School were selected to take part in the Governor Scholar Program this summer. To help find out more about the amazing acceptance into this program, here is reporter and fellow GSP alumni Lauren Golden. Hey Lakers, I'm reporter Lauren Golden here with four of our juniors that have recently been accepted into the Governor Scholar Program. So Kayla, what was your reaction when you found out that you got into GSP? I cried like a baby. That's uh, happy tears, I, I hope. Um, and Abby, um, what are you most excited for when you go to GSP? Just the new experiences and getting to try out new things and meet new people. So Aaron, what focus area do you hope that you get? Um, film studies, actually. And Clay, what will you miss most about home while you're gone for five weeks? Um, probably my family and the block classes. So, Abby, what is going to be your favorite accessory from your wardrobe that you will bring to GSP? Probably my sweatpants. It's it's a little hot in, in the summer. You should, you should re reconsider. We are so proud of all you guys, and I can't wait for the experience that you guys are going to have at GSP. Great job to all the juniors who filled out the tedious application when applying for this program. Your efforts are truly recognized. Everyone knows that on becoming a freshman, you transition into high school by starting out in the dock. Since 2005, the dock has provided freshmen with a separate section from the upperclassmen, allowing them to adapt to the changes from middle school. Well, Lakers, it is time to eliminate the barriers that the dock has provided for years. The end of the dock is near, and here's reporter Lindsay Daniel to give you more details. Hey, Lakers, I'm Lindsay Daniel here with Miss Jessie. So, Miss Jessie, how do you feel about the dock ending and everybody being merged back together next year? Well, I'm really sad because I think the dock has some really great aspects to it. Like, uh, we have Freshman of the Month, and they the students got to pick their friend to go with them to eat, out to eat. So, it was a reward system. We've always done T-shirts. Um, and then we've been able to take reward trips and things like that. And so all those things that kind of help the freshman class come together as a class will be ending with the dock ending. So do you still think you'll be a freshman teacher next year? Yes, I will still teach freshmen. Now I'm here with Mr. Anderson. So Mr. Anderson, what do you think the disadvantages of getting rid of the dock are? Well, there's there there's going to be some disadvantages. There's also going to be some advantages as well. But uh, one big disadvantage that I would per se is that uh, the freshman uh, getting off to that good start in high school is so important that freshman year and and getting those core classes in and one things that one of the things that we tried to accomplish in the freshman doc is is to make sure all of our freshman students were were passing those core classes we did a lot of remediation to try to help them and and uh, that's that's going to be one thing that I see that could be a disadvantage is that uh, we uh, getting off to that good start in the freshman doc, the freshman academy, and it just uh, helps them as their sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. Those poor freshmen. I'm here with Mr. Darnell, who taught in the doc for two years. So, Mr. Darnell, what do you think is a positive side of the doc ending? I think it's going to make the freshmen grow up a little bit quicker. Um, more responsibility. Um, I know down when I was in the dock down there, we tended to kind of baby them a little bit and help move them along, but it's going to force them to really grow up. So who would you say is the best class that you had while teaching at the dock? Uh, your class, of course. No doubt. Comes naturally to us. I'm here with Miss Davidson, a former dock teacher. So Miss Davidson, what was your favorite memory while you were in the dock? Well, out of the nine of my 12 years that I spent in the dock, um, they were pretty much all wonderful memories. I loved several things about the dock. I loved the camaraderie and the friendship that you had with the teachers that you worked really closely with and the students that you got to know so well. Um, I really loved tie-dyeing t-shirts. That was always fun and messy. I loved the freshman awards ceremony where we took them over and we gave them silly awards. And one of my favorites is when you and uh, Lauren and some of the other freshmen at the time gave me the award for best shoes. That's obviously quite an honor um, for me. I also really enjoyed just the field trips and the extra things that we got to do with the students to kind of build those relationships. And I would have to say that definitely the time I spent in room 150 across the hall from Ms. Stapp, one of my dearest friends and just someone that I really thought made me a better teacher. I really enjoyed all those moments. So uh, the doc was a great experience for me. So do you think it's good that it's going or bad? 
I think change is always hard as a semi-OCD person. I don't really deal well with change, but I think that progress is always good, and I think that Russell County High School will be awesome no matter what we decide to do. RIP to the doc. I'm here with Miss Wilson, who is a doc teacher for seven years. So, Miss Wilson, what do you think the biggest difference is in teaching upperclassmen versus the freshmen in the doc? I think for me, I, I felt like I still had an opportunity to kind of have an influence on, on freshmen at that point in time and try to kind of instill some Laker pride in them. And sometimes with 10th through 12th graders, they're already kind of set in their ways and what they think. And so that's one of the things that I miss. And then also, I either had the students in class or Miss Jessie had the students in class, and it's like I knew every kid that come through Russell County High School, and now I look at the halls, and it's like I don't know anybody. And what would you say your favorite memory was while you were in the dock? Probably one of my, my takeaways, and I don't do it anymore, um, are my cabinets where the last day of school students were allowed to put their footprints on there, and just sitting there and looking back and seeing seeing kids' footprints and their names on them, and you just think about, you know, good memories that you made with those kids. So. Well, we'll definitely miss the doc. Prom has been a highly conversed topic among the students, faculty, and staff at Russell County High School since August. Whether it is discussing what the theme will be, what you will wear, or with whom you will go, questions are circling the hall until prom rolls around. But this year, there has been a new topic of conversation. Where is the location of prom going to be? To give you the inside scoop, here's reporter Kylie Fisher. So Hannah, I know you're a sophomore, which means you'll be going to prom in the future. So what do you think would be like a really cool idea for a theme? Um, I'm not really for sure. I'm like the type that's down for whatever, so I'm okay with whatever. I'm just there to have fun. Gotcha, good plan. I'm here with senior Bailey Henson. And Bailey, how do you feel about prom being in the ANC this year? Oh, uh, you know, it's all right. I mean, I don't mind the smell of chlorine, you know, in the room with the with this dancing and everything. As long as there's food, that's okay. I'm here with junior class officer Katie Foley. And what are your opinions about prom this year? Well, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it's, we're just trying a new thing this year at the ANC. Um, our school's under a lot of construction, so we decided the best would be over there because we're not going to have like leaky ceilings and we're always up for new things. So, yeah. All right, sounds great. I'm here with Junior Taylor Bortz. And since you're a junior this year and you probably know what the theme is for this year's prom, what would you want to tell the sophomores as far as what kind of theme might be good for next year's prom? Um, honestly, just to tell the sophomores that it just it's really needs to be creative because, you know, this theme for prom I think is extremely creative and next year you just got to top us off. So, Awesome advice. Thanks. I'm here with senior Mariah Hadley. And how do you feel about prom being over at the ANC this year? I feel like it will smell a whole lot better than sweaty socks. So it sounds like a good plan to me. All right, definitely a fair point. And keeping in mind that it's at the ANC this year, they're probably going to decorate it differently. Since, you know, we're seniors and they don't like to tell us anything, what do you think the theme should be? I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it should be like a zombie theme. Let's do something where everybody's ripped up clothes and we're like in dirt and it'll look really scary. And then maybe people will be less likely to do something really stupid because they already feel stupid. So maybe that's a good decision. All right. I mean, there's definitely some kind of logic behind that. Thanks a ton. I'm here with Miss Stapp. And as a common chaperone at prom, how do you think this is going to work out at the ANC this year? I think prom is going to be beautiful at the ANC. I think that it is a, an elegant location. I think that it's going to be a fresh new interpretation on how prom can be in Russell County. And I think everyone's going to have a really good time. I'm looking forward to it. I'm here with senior Matt Roy. And Matt, how do you feel about prom being over at the ANC this year? I'm very disappointed. For years, it's been at the gym. And that's what I'm used to. Hopefully, it'll be just as good, but you never know. I, I understand your disappointment here, man. Thanks a lot. If you haven't noticed, construction has been happening here at Russell County High School all year. Tons of changes have been made to improve the quality of our school. Here with Mr. Williams to discuss the latest construction updates is reporter Kirsten Perkins. 
I'm here with our principal, Mr. Williams. Now, Mr. Williams, can you give us the latest update on how the construction is going? It's going very good. Um, there, still, we're under construction until August 2015. Some people don't realize that, that uh, they think it, that part of the building is completely finished, but it's not. Uh, it won't all be finished until uh, the date right now is August 2015. Okay, and I know with not having spring break that that caused some complications. Are they still on target and on time, or is it delayed any? It was delayed some because they were hoping to do some of the roofing. That's why we lost some of our parking lot uh, during, during our spring break uh, week that we had, even though we had school. But uh, they are still on target to still be finished by August 2015. Okay, that's awesome. And now what we've all been wondering, how exactly did we end up with a crane on our roof? I knew I was going to have to deal with a lot of uh, construction issues this year, but I did not know there was going to be a crane on our roof. That was one I was not prepared for. They, uh, it was, uh, don't really know what it was, don't know if it was uh, the wind that day, if it was uh, operator error, but it did end up there. There was no structural damage. They did have a structural engineer come in and inspect the building to make sure that uh, there was no damage to the building. And of course, we had no students on that end of the building, so no one was in danger. Thank you, and I'm glad no one was hurt. Due to so many complaints, our school lunches are going to be changing for the better. With more on this story, here's reporter Mackenzie Long. Hi, Lakers. I'm reporter Mackenzie Long, and I'm here with Susan Melton. So, Susan, what, are the, what were the restrictions on the food at the beginning of the year? Well, the restrictions at the beginning of the school year um, included that all foods that were provided for students had to be whole grain, which included all the bread, all the chicken pro breaded chicken products, um, your pastas. Um, had to be whole grain this year. Another restriction, oh, it's not really a restriction, it was just, I guess, a requirement that all students, if you came through to get a breakfast and or lunch, um, you had to take a fruit or vegetable this year. That was another requirement. Um, there's another requirement as far as sodium intake. There's a, a, a maximum intake of sodium. The way that is determined as far as your sodium intake, there's a whole complicated system um, that Frankfurt has that whenever I do the menus, I put, plug that into this um, system and it will usually red flag me. Uh, too much sodium, too much sodium. We have to find products that, and that even affects the whole grain, that are, have less sodium, um, less fat, less calories. So it's, it's a whole complicated mess, basically, is what it is. So as far as um, from here on out until next year, because of your student voices, um, I know many of you wrote letters. Um, I had sent a request to teachers if students had, you know, they want their opinion heard as far as the whole grain products go. Um, we did get a waiver. So we can serve the real white fluffy biscuits now. And any ch breaded chicken products, it, it will not be whole grain. It will just be your basic breading because um, I know that's it, it's hard to prepare it's hard to cook a lot of it falls off the breading does it gets soggy and I know our cooks get a lot of blame over that but it's really hard to prepare that mass quantity in such a short amount of time but hopefully uh, students keep your keep your opinions and your voices heard um, contact you know your your congress people your senators Rand Paul is big into this uh, Mitch McConnell wants to hear from you as well and those of you who are 18 and registered to vote go vote you know let your let your voice be heard because every vote does count and I also heard that there were some physical changes being made to the uh, cafeteria. Do you know anything about that? Mackenzie, what I know about that is next year, um, we, of course, we have the third line now, which is the chill zone. Um, that third line will also be a regular hot line as well, just like the, the other line is with your hot foods. Um, there will be some um, cosmetic changes on that where the chill zone is at. Um, I think some of that planning is still still in those stages, but um, I think lunch period will be a little bit more condensed than it was spread out over, over this last few years. Okay, thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mackenzie. With several rainy days, sports have been on quite a delay. Track meets, tennis matches, baseball and softball games have been getting canceled and rescheduled. But a little rain could never stop the Russell County Lakers. To give you all the latest Lakers sports updates, here's reporter Alexis Best. Hey RCHS, although it's been difficult weather lately, the Lakers have luckily been able to sneak in a few games in between rain showers. Two weeks ago, the Laker baseball team took on Lexington Catholic, losing 11-1. Last week, they defeated Hart County, Butler County, and Meade County. The Lady Lakers softball team had a great district win over Clinton County last week with a score of 7-2. to 
This past weekend, they traveled to North Laurel to compete in the Kentucky Prep Five Star Classic. They returned home having suffered three losses to Fern Creek, Model, and South Laurel. The track and field team traveled to Taylor County last Thursday for a meet and returned home victorious. They then went to Somerset last Saturday to compete in the Jones Spurlock Lake Cumberland Classic. Overall, the boys placed 9th out of 17 teams and the girls placed 12th out of 18 teams. Last Thursday, the tennis team played Casey County and took an overall loss 1-6. They were back at it again that Friday at Barron County, both girls and boys suffering a loss. It's been a great few weeks as an RCHS Laker. Keep up the hard work. Many seniors have been working hard to get their scholarships turned in and ready to go. With many updates, here's our College and Career Readiness Counselor, Ms. Robin Rickson. Hey seniors, we've got some important dates from the College and Career Center. Um, on Thursday, April the 30th, that is the deadline for the senior dues and your cap and gown measurements. Please go to the front office um, to take, that, take care of that. On Sunday, May the 17th, we will have the Senior Awards Ceremony at the ANC from 2 to 4. Um, on Tuesday, May 26th, will be the Senior Picnic and Movie Day, and you'll also receive your cap and gown and your senior t-shirt on that day. Um, there's been several questions about FAFSA verification. If you have been selected and notified for FAFSA verification, please take care of that and follow the instructions that's on the email that you've been sent. Several scholarship reminders coming up. On April the 30th is the City of Russell Springs Community Achievement Scholarship deadline. Uh, April 30th is also the Stratton Tipton Scholarship deadline. April 30th is also the Russell County Homemakers Scholarship deadline. On the 24th is the Russell County Business and Professional Women's, Scholar Women's Club Scholarship. And um, there's several that um, on the 29th is Northwestern Mutual. The 24th is the Russell Springs Masonic Lodge. On June the 30th is the 2015 Aspiring Nurse Scholarship. On the 24th is the Sarah Roberts Hart Memorial Scholarship, and the Friends of Wolf Creek National Fish Hatchery Scholarship needs to be postmarked by May the 15th. If you have any questions about scholarships, please stop by the guidance office or you can stop by to see me. Um, please take care of all of your end of year senior activities. If you have any fines in the library, uh, make sure you go by and pay those so you can receive your diploma on graduation night. Thank you. Well, Lakers, that's all the news we have for this episode of WLKR. Stay strong and keep working hard through these next few weeks of school. I'm Ambria Heights. And I'm Morgan Emerson. That's all the news. And, and we're, we're out of here. here. Hey, look, is it recording? <laughs> hey, Lakers, I'm reporter Lauren Golden here with um, four of our juniors that just got... <laughs> And I heard you had a dance move you wanted to show us. A dance move? Okay. I can. Let's go for it. So classic, we call this the motorcycle. Hey Lakers, I'm here with four I'm I'm, I'm reporter here. So Clay, what was your first reaction when you found out that you got into GSP? I was really excited. To say. You <laughs> You're just like Carol. <laughs> I am so. Okay, okay. So, Kayla, what was your first reaction when you found out that you got into GSP? Well, I cried like a baby. That's about it. Well, um, tears of joy. Tears of joy. <laughs> You'll be crying a whole lot of GSP, trust me. So, Aaron, what are you going to do with all that free college? Um, go to college? You will be glad not to worry about student loans. So everyone can see, we're breaking free, we're so free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I am here with this lovely quartet of girls, and they have a signature move to show you. I'm here with our new foreign exchange student, Tom. Now, Tom, where are you from? Um, I'm from Germany. And how long do you plan to stay here? I'm only here for the last, the end of the school year. And I've heard that you've already been in the United States for a while. Where have you been at? Yeah, I stayed in Tennessee the last eight months. And do you like it a lot here? Yeah. 
Are, yep. you, are you excited to spend your last couple months here at RCA? Cheers. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I just kind of go like, graduating. Uh, <laughs> oh. It's been a great few weeks as an RCHS Laker. Keep up the hard work.